Hello, my dear students. So today we are discuss a very important chapter of the CBSC class 10. CBSC class 10. Very interesting chapter that is a life processes. You know the plant, plant and animals are the most common to example of living things. In their body, different type of process are happening for their living purpose, right? One of them is the nutrition. You know that without nutrition, any living organism cannot survive. Sometimes the living organism, they can produce their own food and others, they cannot produce their own food. So at first we discuss about the mode of nutrition. What is the mean about that? We know that all living organisms require food to survive. Different type of foods, that's okay, but they need the food. Why? Because you know, for the form the food, we get the energy. And without energy, we cannot do anything, right? So you may wonder what is there in a food and which help the survival of the organism. So in the food, you know that when it is actually going our cell, that time we get the energy in the form of ATP. So in the food, what is there? That is the nutrient. You know, that is a different type of nutrient and required the, for the all of the living organism. Organism consume the nutrient and which enable the, carry out the various function of the body function. Like I am talking with you, right? This is also the function and it is required also the nutrient, also the food. Without food, I cannot talk. So the process by which organism consume the food is called the nutrition. And which are then utilized by the body. After when we have taken some nutrient like the carbohydrate, like the protein, like the fat, that time when they're entered in the cell, what is happened? Then we get the energy and by the use of this energy, we doing the, all the different function, all the different function. But some organism can produce their own food and some are not. According to us, uh, we are classify this thing into the mainly the two group. One is the autotropic nutrition. Another one is the heterotropic nutrition. At first we are discussed that what is the mean by autotrophs? Autotrophs means the auto means the self and tropos means the nutrition. Autotropic nutrition means the organism can prepare or synthesize their own food with the help of some inorganic raw material like the carbon dioxide, like the water, but the presence of sunlight. You know, the sunlight is the main source of energy. The organism which are able to synthesize their food, they are called the autotrophs. And you know, the, all the green plants, they are the autotrophs because they can synthesize their food. But some bacteria also be there, like they are cyanobacteria. They are called the BGA or the blue-green algae. Another name of blue-green algae, that is a cyanobacteria. These bacteria are also the autotrophs in nature. So this is the autotrophic nutrition. It's most important. So now we are discuss the another type of nutrition that is the heterotropic nutrition. What is the mean by the heterotropic nutrition? At first we understand that this word ultimately came from the Greek words. That is the heteros meaning the different or other and the tropos mean the nutrition. So the organism which are, cannot produce their own foods, they are dependent on others. That time they are called the heterotrophs. You know that mode of nutrition, the organism obtain the energy from the intake of the organic substance. 
so the organism of the heterotroph that means they cannot produce their own food but how they can get the energy they get the energy by the intake of complex organic substance like you know you eat the food you eat carbohydrate you eat protein you eat fat right you get the energy so generally the plant and animals are the resource by which the heterotrophic organism can take the food. So the organism that are known as the heterotrophs, they cannot synthesize their food. Example of the heterotrophs, fungi are the most common example. The animals, you know the, the human beings, we cannot synthesize our food. And some bacteria are also the heterotrophs like the E. coli bacteria, so that is the most important two category, the autotrophs and the heterotrophs. In your boards, the most important question arises that what is the difference between the autotrophs and the heterotrophs? This question may be twisted in that manner, like the difference between the autotropic nutrition and the heterotropic nutrition. That is the most important two questions. Now we are discuss the different types of the heterotrophs. The heterotrophs are not the similar types in the all the living organisms. So they are different types. Now we are discuss the most important things. Number one, one by one we are discuss this thing, right? So at first you understand that we are classify the living organism into the two category. One is the heterotrophs and another one is the heterotrophs. And now we are classify the different types of heterotrophs. Number one, it is a herbivorous. What is the mean by the herbivorous? You know already. Now, what is the mean by the herbivorous? These are the animals that feed directly on plants. So they are the plant eater. They are called the herbivorous. Most commonly, some example like the cow, goat, or rabbit, you know, they are eat the grass or some plant products and the carnivores also they cannot produce their own food so they are dependent on others so these are the animals that is feed on the herbivores like they eat the deer they eat the cow they are called the carnivores most common some example like the tiger and lion and the omnivores what is the mean of omnivores this is the animals, they eat both plant animals. That time they are called the omnivores. And you know, the another very important types of the heterotrophs, that is the saprophytes. What is the mean by the saprophytes? Saprophytes are the organisms that feed the dead and decaying organic matter. They grow on it and they take the nutrient from the dead organic matter. You know some bacteria or mushroom are grow in your garden when where some dead leaf is there, right? So they take the nutrient from the dead organic matter. So they are called the saprophytes. Now a very important type of para or heterotrophs that is the parasites. These are the organism, they live inside on the body or maybe outside on the body. They are all the host. Host are the organism by which or by them the parasite take the nutrient from it. They are called the host. Like you know the plasmodium is caused the malaria, right? But plasmodium, this is the protozoa, they take the nutrient from the human. So human are the host and parasites like the plasmodium, they grow inside our body and take the nutrient from it. The type of example also is there, like the cascuta. It is an exceptional plant that obtain the food from the green plants. You know, the cascuta is the yellow color plants. They cannot produce their own food. So they ultimately depends on some green plants. Some ascaries, you know, they live in our intestine of the humans and they take the nutrient from it. So they also be the parasites. 
sometimes parasites grow on the on the skin on the hair that time they are called the ectoparasite when the parasite go inside that time they are called the endoparasite that is the difference so another important types of heterotrophs that is the insectivorous plant but insectivorous plant they can produce their own food but they grow in that particular in area where the soil is some deficient in some nitrogen other other some uh, nutrient is there but nitrogen is not there but the plant are you know that nitrogen is most essential nutrient so how they are take how they are get this nitrogen that time they ultimately trap the insect and kill the insect after killing the insect they take the nitrogen from the insect body this type of plant are called the insectivorous plant but when they need the nitrogen that time they are trap the insect some common example you know the venus fly trap is a common example so that is the most important question arise in that particular topic that is a difference between the autotrophs and the heterotrophs number one we already understand that the autotrophs they obtain the energy by the preparing of the food from some inorganic substance and the carbon dioxide and the water in the presence of sunlight on the other hand the heterotrophs they obtain the energy from the complex organic substance they, by the consuming the plants or animals autotrophs these organism are called the producer because they produce their food and the heterotrophs they utilize the food so they are called the consumer some example like the green plants algae and autotrophs in nature and on the other hand some fungi some animal all animals not the some animals they are the heterotrophs in nature very interesting fact i give you a very important information that plants do not always have an autotrophic mode of nutrition they also be the that means the plant they are all time they are autotrophs in nature all the plants in the nature they are autotrophs no, that is not true sometimes they are parasitic sometimes they are carnivorous sometimes they are saprophytic in nature also some common example like the raphelsia is a root parasite it draws the water and minerals from the roots of the other plants cats are the purely obligatory carnivores they cannot digest fruits vegetables pulses grains they need a high level of protein in their diet you know you have some uh, in your room in your house or some cats also you must give some protein like fish something means meat they lack an efficient system for digesting the plant product they do not consume or digest the plant product because the enzyme which is required the digestion of the plant product that is not present in the cat bodies like the cellulose cellulase is the most common enzyme but in the cat's body they ultimately consume the protein and they easily digest the protein because in the cats or cow sorry cats and the dog in their bodies have the special proteolytic enzyme that is the pepsin so the cats digest digestive system are specialized suit for the carnivorous eating habits so all of the different organism have the food habits in our nature right but sometimes some evolutionary process our food habit some things are change now we are discuss the autotrophic in nutrition in plants in some details so you uh, we already know that all living organism consume some form of the nutrient to sustain the life but all living things are require the nutrient already we know that all all animals 
they are consume uh, the plants or other animals and plants also we consume not the animals but plant consume the carbon dioxide and water from the environment to produce their food what type of food plant produce it's the glucose so therefore the process of taking the source of energy from the outside of the body an organism known as a nutrition so how you are define the nutrition so nutrition is the process by taking the any source of fruit or any source of energy from the outside of the body that time it is called the nutrition do you know the what mode of nutrition carried out the plant already you know that is the plant have the autotrophic nutrition that means plant can produce their own food but how the plant can produce their own food and what type of food plant can produce like the protein type of food no you already know that the glucose that means the carbohydrate type of food plant can produce right so the plant can synthesize their own food by the some use some raw materials like the water and carbon dioxide by the process of the photosynthesis so the plant produce their food by the process of photosynthesis so they are called the autotrophs let us explore how plants prepare their own food so that means the process behind that that is the photosynthesis that is very interesting chapter another important chapter also it is there in your icc syllabus in the class 10 also in the cbs 10 in the it is included in the life process chapter but that is very interesting chapter photosynthesis at first you are try to understand energy is essential for all the life processes without energy the life processes can not to happen so all living organism require the nutrition and what is the ultimate source of the nutrition of the earth ultimate source you know the sun is the ultimate source of the energy and energy from the sun is captured by only the plants and converted into the usable form so ultimate source that is the sun so it is the photosynthesis process by which sun energy are converted to the usable form so therefore the origin of all the foods is the food prepared by the plants and after that when the food consumed by the animals that time this energy which is converted from the sun that is also be transferred from the plant to animals when the animals take the food from the plant autotrophs that means they can synthesize their own food such as green plants and some bacteria already we tell the name that is the bga cyanobacteria blue green algae can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis they are capable of trapping the solar energy but why the question is arise in your mind why the plant can take the uh, solar energy why the humans don't why we do not trap the sun and the light otherwise many problem are solved because the food crisis that is not arising in the human society if we have the power to trap the sunlight but it is the power of the chlorophyll this is a green pigments we already know that it is a green pigments this is the chlorophyll they have the power to trap the solar energy and this trapped solar energy then converted into the chemical energy by the use of two raw material one is the carbon dioxide another one is the h2o so now we are define the photosynthesis process so it is a process by which chlorophyll containing cells present in the leaves synthesized food in the form of carbohydrate by using the carbon dioxide and the water and the sunlight this is the photosynthesis process i give you very 
interesting definition. If you write down this definition in your exam, should you get the full marks? So therefore the raw materials required for the photosynthesis, that is the carbon dioxide and H2O. And the products which is formed by the photosynthesis process, that is the carbohydrate and the oxygen. That is the two important product. But which one is the most main product? That is a carbohydrate. So now if you represent the chemical equation of photosynthesis, that is the 6CO2 plus 6H2O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, C6H12O6, that means the glucose and the oxygen are produced. So in that chemical reaction, what do we understand? That carbon dioxide and H2O react together and produce a glucose. And the, as a byproduct, oxygen are liberated. And photosynthesis process require the sunlight. And photosynthesis that takes place in the chlorophyll containing cells. But now a question arises how the raw material consumed by the plant? The raw materials required in the photosynthesis, that is the carbon dioxide and H2O. Right, but how the raw materials they get? First of all, plants obtain the water to their roots. And water is then transported to all parts of the body, of the plant body, by the help, the help of xylem. We already know that xylem is a vascular tissue. And you know the plant has the stomata, which is the main size of, site of the gaseous exchange. From the atmosphere, they trap the carbon dioxide. After the formation of oxygen in the photosynthesis process, they release this oxygen into the atmosphere by the also the help of the stomata. But what is the stomata? Right? What is the stomata? Stoma, stomata is a very tiny spore present mainly on the surface of the leaves. Like this one is just tomato. They are also present on the surface of the young stem and roots. If I, I ask a question that uh, stomata are present only in the leaves. No, that is not present only in the leaves. They present also the young stem and some young, young roots also. Clear? This is the uh, structure of the stomata. But you know, the stomach is a small opening. But how this opening are controlled when it is open and when it is closed? This is the, the function of the guard cells. So stomata consists a stomatal opening or the stoma, which is surrounded by the two distinct epidermal cells called the guard cells. This one is the guard cells and this one is the guard cells. And the opening of the stomata is totally dependent on the guard cell. But the guard cells are very important characteristic feature that guard cells have the lots of chlorophyll. And that particular cells have the lots of power of photosynthesis. And they are very thick and they are very elastic in nature. Now we are at explain very important to one topic, the theories. Theories ultimately behind the opening and closing of the stomata. Two theories there. One is the sugar concentration theory, and another one is the K plus ion concentration theory. Sugar concentration is the old theory, and the K plus theory is the modern theory. This is the most important topic in your ICC 10, also in the CBSC 10. So all English medium students, this topic is very important. So at first we have discussed the opening process in the old theory, that is a sugar concentration theory. But when the stomata are open, in the daytime, in the daytime you know that is the, this is like the guard cells. In there, Sugar are produced because already I tell you that the guard cells have the lots of chlorophyll. So the photosynthesis takes place in the daytime and the sugar is produced. 
right? I already explained another process that is the osmosis. When the sugar concentration is rich in that particular gut cells, so how their concentration must be given the low. When some water molecules, water molecules are go from these surrounding cells to the gut cells. That time the gut cells become the target and the bulge out. This is called the sugar concentration theory for the opening of the stomata. On the other hand, in the light, in the night time, when the water content of the leaf falls short, the water drawn out from the gut cells, because in that particular time in the night, same amount of sugar is not produced. And that time the exosmosis are takes place and the stomata are closed. Now we are discussed the another important theory that is the K plus concentration theory. In the K plus concentration theory, you know the guard cells, this one is the guard cells and this one is the subsidiary cells. That means the surrounding cells. You know, in the light reaction of the photosynthesis, they are produced ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The, these ATPs have the power in the involved in the active transport. So they drawn or take the K plus ions from the surroundings to the guard cells. They take the guard cells from the surrounding cells. So K plus concentration now reach in the guard cells. But how the, this uh, different concentration are equilibrium? When the water molecules now come into the gut cells from the surrounding cells, when the what because the solute solution solute K plus also be one of the solute, the solute concentration will reach. How this is minimized to get the, to mix it mixing up with the water? And from the water is coming the surrounding cells. And now the guard cells take the lots of water. That's at that time they bulge out, they touch it, and the uh, opening of the stomata takes place. On the other hand, in the night time, the ATP is not there, right? The ATP is not there in the guard cells, not in the same amount. That time they do not drawn in the K plus ions from the surroundings. So that time K plus leaks out in the night from the guard cell to the surrounding cells. So reduce the target pressure of the guard cells and they ultimately that time close. So this is the opening and closing theory of the K plus concentration. Now we are discussing the most important process of the photosynthesis. Process of the photosynthesis, that means they have the two phase. First phase, it is called the photochemical phase. Also it is called the light reaction. Another second phase, it is called the biosynthetic phase. What is the difference? Photochemical means the series of chemical reaction takes place in the presence of light. So they are called the light reaction or the photo, photo means the light. So in the presence of light, the chemical reaction are takes place. So they are called the photochemical phase. But where the light reaction are takes place, you know the structure of the chloroplast. Chloroplast have the two important zone. One is the thylakoids, another is the stroma and thylakoids of the chloroplast, that means this one is the main site of the light reaction. If you have some, give some details about the light reaction and what is happening in the light reaction. So light reaction from the name you are understand that the light energy is absorbed. It is a step one. Light energy are absorbed by the chlorophyll molecules. After absorbing the chlorophyll molecules, the sunlight, the chlorophyll molecules are excited. 
So first step, the chlorophyll molecules absorb the sunlight. Second step, after the absorbing the sunlight, chlorophyll molecules are excited. Third step, they ultimately split the water molecules into the hydrogen and oxygen molecules. And fourth step, two important product of the light reaction, it is formed now. That is called the ATP and NADPH2. That is the products of light reaction, which are used in that dark reaction also. So light reaction occur in the membrane of the thylakoids. Please you bear in mind, that is the most important question. So I give some now summarized point of view, the events occurring in the light reaction. Number one, absorption of the light energy by the chlorophyll molecules. Number two, the splitting of water molecules into the hydrogen and oxygen. And third important point, the light reaction, we get the ATP and NADPH, right? If you are write down the reaction form, show NADP plus, they take this electron and in the presence of H plus, they are convert to NADPH and oxygen, which is ultimately producing that light reaction and ADP, ADP means how many phosphate? Adenosine, diphosphate, di means a two phosphate. They are ultimately get another phosphate. So they are ultimately form the ATP structure. This is called the phosphorylation. That means the phosphate are attached into the compound. Also it is called the photophosphorylation because these steps are happening when in the presence of light. This is also happening in the two step. One is a cyclic photophosphorylation, another is a non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now it's a biosynthetic phase. It includes the reaction, different type of reaction now takes place, but that is not dependent on the light, but it is maybe happening in the daytime. Right? But it is not directly required the light. So they are called the biosynthetic phase. They are called the dark phase or dark reaction. So what is the product are forming the dark reaction? That is a carbohydrate as a food. You already know that why the photosynthesis are important to production of the food. It is the dark reaction where the food are formed in the form of carbohydrate. But how the food are formed? The, uh, you hear some, it's cyclic process are happening. That is called the Kelvin cycle. This reaction does not require, require the direct sunlight, but where this dark reaction takes place? In the stroma, in the stroma of the chloroplast. During the dark reaction, ATP and NADPH, which is form in the light reaction, it is now utilized with the help of carbon dioxide and produce the food. So events occurring during the dark reaction, number one, reduction of the carbon dioxide to form the carbon dioxide and, and transforming the glucose molecules to one mole of starch. That means this one is a single unit, it is a glucose. When the different glucose unit are joined together, by the process of the polymerization, it is a polymer form, so it is the starch. So glucose is the monosaccharide, starch is the polysaccharide. So if you are summarized the light reaction and the dark reaction, so light dependent reaction occur in the chlorophyll containing parts, that is the thylakoids. In that particular uh, phase, the light are absorbed the water are splitting, is happening. So the oxygen are produced and this electron ultimately help to production of the ATP and NADPH. Light depend, independent reaction, that is the dark reaction, it is happening in the stroma. And in here, carbon dioxide fixation takes place. And in here, 
the ATP and NADPH are utilized to form the glucose when the glucose are polymerized to form the starch because starch are the product that is stored in the plant. It is a polysaccharide. Some interesting facts. You must be uh, no. Do you know that total amount of oxygen is produced by the uh, by an acre of trees per year equal the amount of consumed by the around 18 people annually? So plant is our best friend, right? Because they give the oxygen. Without oxygen, we cannot survive. One tree produced 260 pounds of oxygen annually, a big tree. Hydrogen is a clean fuel. Some green algae like the Chlamydomonas are being cultured to convert water to oxygen and H2O. This mass production of hydrogen ultimately could prove the beneficial. This may be used in the different area, but now still under the research. Please you bear in mind. So what is the end products of the photosynthesis? First of all, it is the glucose. So simply glucose, the utilized by the plants, because the glucose also is the food of the plants. Food consumption by the plant cells, some uh, glucose may be stored in the form of starch. Another one important example of the carbohydrate that is a sucrose, it is a disaccharide form. Sometimes fat and protein synthesis takes place from this glucose, water, right? In, it can be reutilized by the photosynthesis process and oxygen. Some of the uh, oxygen are plant also be used for their respiration purpose and excess, um, excess amount of oxygen, they are exit out or diffuse out from the plant body, which one is the most important for human body? Not, to, not only the human body, it is important in the all living things. But you know, the very important topic now discussed in the whole of the world, that is a global warming. But what is the global warming? But how the global warming is reduced? We already know that the global warming are reduced, how? By the plantation, by the, by the plantation for process. We already know that utilization of carbon dioxide and water to produce food in the process of photosynthesis and release of the oxygen. So green plants help to reducing the amount of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the most important cause of the global warming. So carbon dioxide level is decreased, the global warming also becomes reduced. So plant is a very important tool. All human beings bear in mind this information that plant is the best friend of the human beings. Some experiment. Now we are discussed about the photosynthesis process. So do plants prepare food in the all times? Are there essential condition, essential condition that is required for photosynthesis? That is some factors which is involved in the photosynthesis. There is a two type of factor. One is the external factor. One is another one internal factor. Like the size of the leaf. If the leaf size is very big, that time the photosynthesis rate is maximum. The availability of the water, water, water content if the high, that time photosynthesis is the more. The carbon dioxide concentration is the more. So that time the photosynthesis rate also be the high. This is some internal or external factor, which is very much depend on the photosynthesis process. Number one, sunlight. Sunlight is a very important or essential for the photosynthesis. That is we know. But how we prove it? That time we are given an ex uh, experiment. We place a healthy green potted plant in the dark room for one to two days. Why? This is done to ensure that the plant consume all its reserved food and leaves that does not contain any starch. Then the covered portion of the leaf of the plant of the both sides with the two uniform pieces of the black paper, black paper that you cover on the plant. You use some uh, paper clips. 
Now expose the plant to the bright light. After a few hours, remove the leaf and decolorize the leaf with the alcohol. And then you drop this leaf into the iodine solution. You observe that the portion of the leaf are covered with the black paper does not show any presence of the starch or the food. Because when the starch are react with the iodine solution, they take they are ultimately give the blue black color. But the portion which is covered by the black paper, they do not change the blue black color because there the food is not there. Why? Because the sunlight is not rich in that particular region. Because sunlight is the essential, it is proved in that particular experiment. Right? So the food prepared on the plants through the process of photosynthesis in the store of, store of the starch. And when react with the iodine solution, it changes the blue black color. Only those portion of the leaves were exposed to sunlight, good photosynthesis, and change the blue black color. And the covering part, not the produce their food. Next, very important, another process we are discussed that is the chlorophyll is the essential for the photosynthesis. This type of experiment is very important for all the students of the CBSC 10 and ICSC 10. Plant are variegated plant. Variegated plants means which has the both green and non-green area, like the cotton plants, like the money plant. In it, if, if you will put it in the dark room for two to three days. Why? To ensure that uh, they are utilized some all the reserved food material. After that, you place the plant into the sunlight for the six hours. Allow the photosynthesis to take place. Then you pluck the leaf from the plant. Right? Now decolorize the leaf with alcohol and give the dilute solution of the iodine. You observe that leaf is treated with the alcohol that is lost the green color. And blue black color obtained from, for the invent of the iodine. The green plants of the variegated leaf contain the chlorophyll. Therefore, only this plant could photosynthesize and manufacture the food, right? And which one is the yellow color. They have no chlorophyll and they cannot produce the food. So they do not convert to blue black color. And now you are discussing another important experiment that is the carbon dioxide are essential. Carbon dioxide are the essential. Now we are discussing that the carbon dioxide also be the essential for the photosynthesis. But how you are prove this thing? How you are prove this thing? Now we are give some experimental proof. Select two healthy potted plant. This one like nearly same size and label them A and B. This is the A plant like and this is like the B plant. Also in the same step that you put it into the dark room into the two to three days. Then you place two, place two glass plates under the both of the plates. I place a watch glass containing the potassium hydroxide beside the pot A. This one is the pot A. Cover both the plant by inverting the separate bell jar. I invert the bell jar and put it on it. Potassium hydroxide have the power. Why? What is the power of the potassium hydroxide? It is a power to absorb the carbon dioxide. Therefore, carbon dioxide is not available in the plant A. Right? So, after few hours, you allow the plant to the photosynthesis, so you put into the sunlight. So, these plants, their leaf, do not produce any food. So you pluck out any leaf 
and put it into the iodine solution. From this benzene, and you observe that the blue black color is not observed because not food are produced because carbon dioxide is not there in that particular benzene. On the same time, if you if pluck out a leaf from the benzene B, and also you drop it into the iodine solution, you observe that the blue black color are observed. Why? Because in here, the potassium hydroxide is not there. So carbon dioxide are present in that particular system. So plant can produce the food by the presence of carbon dioxide. So in that from experiment, we are proved that carbon dioxide is the essential for the photosynthesis process. Another one important experiment we have takes place that is the photosynthesis in the laboratory. In that particular experiment, we proved that oxygen is liberated in the photosynthesis process. So, uh, place a aquatic plant, commonly we are take the hydrilla plants in a beaker filled with the water and cover the plant with a transparent funnel, this one, an inverted test tube now in open end of the funnel. Put it on it. And this whole system, now you put in the sunlight. After some times, you observe that some air bubbles are produced on there. But how? Why the air bubbles are produced? Because hydrilla plants photosynthesized and liberate the oxygen. Right? This is proof that the oxygen is liberated by the photosynthesis process. But photosynthesis process, what is their significance? Number one, this is food for all. All the living things depend on the plant for their food. Second important significance, that is the balancing the oxygen and carbon dioxide ratio. This is two important significance of the photosynthesis. Already we discussed some factors like some external factors and the leaf size, like the temperature, water content, carbon dioxide content, that is control the photosynthesis rate. On the other hand, some internal factor like the water content of the leaf, right? Structure of the protoplasm, structure of the leaf, some internal factors also there. So this is the chapter of the photosynthesis and the nutrition in plants. I give some all some details idea about this chapter. Please, any doubt, please you comment in that uh, chat box. So I try to solve your doubts. So thank you, thank you all of you. Thank you, bye-bye, take care.